molecule. In this presentation, we'll go through the not uncommon situation when a single flap is not the best option to uh, close up a surgical defect and the proposed solution to this situation. When multiple flaps are being considered for reconstructing a large surgical defect, consideration should also be given to issues like uh, flaps matching color and texture and thickness, and also the ultimate scars uh, between these flaps and the recipient uh, site in relation to relaxed skin tension lines. There may be about a dozen different uh, flaps that have been proposed to be used for in this situation, multiple flaps including some advancement flaps like the etioplasty, the crescentic advancement flaps, and the helical rim advancement flap, the A to T plasty, the curvilinear A to T plasty, the O to Z plasty, hatched flaps, V to Y double flaps, double Limburg rhomboid flaps, and triple uh, Limburg rhomboid flaps. When the surgical defect is too large to be filled up by one flap from one side, or if the surgical defect is in the midline in an exposed area, and maintaining symmetry would require recruiting tissues from both sides of the defect, um, then one could consider one of the simplest techniques, uh, bilateral advancement flaps. Uh, the ultimate scar would resemble an etch, and that's why it's sometimes called an etch plasty. It's used in areas like the forehead, the lips, and the eyelids, and it uh, basically recruits tissues from the two sides of the defect, particularly if the defect is square or if it's circular, and they will be sutured uh, in the middle, and the two uh, advancement flaps would then be sutured in their new position, and the small barrel triangles at the four corners would be closed primarily. So if you start with a circular or a square defect, you can uh, design bilateral advancement flaps, taking care to uh, have the uh, incisions parallel to relaxed skin tension lines, the lesion is excised, and then the flaps are raised on one side followed by the other. You will need uh, barrows triangles at the corners. The dimension of these equilateral triangles should be about half uh, the uh, length or the breadth of the uh, circular or the square defect. Once you have the barrows triangles removed, the uh, advancement flap can be mobilized easier to fill up half of the defect on one side and the other uh, flap from the other side would close up uh, the remaining portion. The two flaps would meet in the midline and then the barrows triangles can be closed primarily and this is the etchoplasty as the final scar of the a bilateral advancement flap. And although the use of bilateral advancement flaps, the etchoplasty is more common in midline uh, defects where maintaining symmetry is important by recruiting tissues from both sides of the defect uh, meeting up in the midline. Uh, you can employ the um, slight modification to the technique for paramedian lesions and defect not strictly lying in the midline and the two advancing flaps are not necessarily equal or symmetrical in shape. The important thing is that to have the incision lines of the two advancement flaps well hidden in relaxed skin tension lines and uh, between the uh, aesthetic subunits of the face. Uh, this can be used in uh, reconstruction of defects closer to the eyelid and the upper lip and the perialer area. Another site where bilateral advancement flaps may be considered is lesions and defects on the helix. In this situation, if the defect and the lesion are, are large enough uh, to be closed up by advancing tissues from one side, you 
consideration should be given to using tissues from the two sides meeting up in the middle. And you would need to free up the flaps by incision in the helical sulcus, and this will free up two flaps on the two sides of the defect formed up of skin, perichondrium, and cartilage, and they would be mobilized to meet up in the, mid in the middle of the defect with considerably less distortion than using flap from one side only. When minimal distortion to one side of the defect is really important, like in lesions close to eyelids, hairline, eyebrows, or the lips, maintaining this line without much distortion is important. And in this situation, you may consider using the A to T plus C, which is basically bilateral advancement flaps from the two sides of the defect, where most of the tension is perpendicular to the line that you want to save from any distortion. Um, the um, dimensions of the A to T plus D are related to the size of the defect. If that's D, then you construct a triangle uh, twice the, uh, with a length twice the diameter of the defect. The angles at the base of the triangle should be about 75 degrees, so the angle at the apex would be about 30 degrees, and two uh, Burroughs triangles are uh, designed at the edges of the line, and there are equilateral triangles where each side is equal to half the diameter of the defect. So if you have a lesion uh, bordering one important uh, surgical line, like eyebrows or lips or eyelids, um, you would, and start by incising that line, you have two small barrels triangles on the edges of the line, and then the lesion that has been transformed from circular shape to triangular shape uh, is excised, and now you have two flaps on the two sides of the defect that can be advanced to meet up in the middle and there is minimal tension on the line that we want to save from any distortion and the final shape is like a T, an inverted T in this position. You've closed up the various triangles primarily and the horizontal bar of the T was saved from any distortion. And the important uh, surgical line uh, forming the horizontal bar of the T uh, is not always a straight line. It can be a curvilinear line, like in the lines of the upper lip, for example. You can still have two advancement flaps around this and meeting up with minimal distortion of this curved line. The same applies to the supra tip area and the no small lesions in there. You can use an A to T plus T with a horizontal bar of the T like a curved line rather than a straight line. So far we've seen examples of bilateral advancement flaps in different shapes, uh, but bilateral rotation flaps can also be used either in the form of an O to Z plus T and uh, defects in the scalp, for example, where the defect is too large to be filled up by a single rotation flap, or when the hatchet flaps are used, which is basically a modification of the O to Z technique. The O to Z plus D is using bilateral rotation flaps for a circular defect. Two bilateral rotation flaps are being designed on the two sides of the circular defect. And because we're using two flaps rather than one, we can afford to have the length of the flap only about twice the diameter of the defect. Once the uh, lines were drawn and then the flaps were incised and raised up with adequate undermining of the tissues around the flaps and the defect, and then they can be rotated into the defect to meet up in the middle of it. And the final scar would look like a Z. Uh, the initial defect looked like an O. Hatchet flaps are similar to the bilateral rotation flaps used in the O to Z plus D, except that there is, will be a back cut at the end of the incision of the rotation. 
flat. This back cut will make it easier for the flat to meet up in the middle of the defect by a combination of rotation and sliding uh, movement. So there will be less tension at the suture line where the two flaps meet in the middle. But there will also be a defect where this uh, back cut was uh, incised. And this triangular defect can be closed primarily by a V to Y type of plasty. So back cuts are uh, designed at the end of the rotation flaps. And once these back cuts are uh, incised, it's easier now to mobilize the flaps to the middle of the defect with no tension. And the same applies to the other flap as well. And there would be a triangular defect where the back cut was uh, incised. And this triangular flap would be closed by a V to Y plus D and the uh, suturing of the two flaps in the midline would be tension free. Double island flaps may be considered in situations where there is limited local tissues available to close up a large defect or the tissues don't have enough elasticity. The triangular uh, island flaps can be designed and incised around the defect uh, keeping the uh, skin connected to its subcutaneous bed where it would receive all its blood supply. And then the two island flaps can be mobilized by gliding on their subcutaneous uh, connection to meet up in the middle of the defect where they can be sutured together. The two double island flaps are being drawn on the two sides of the lesion. And once the lesion itself is excised, the edges of the flaps can then be incised. The main thing is to keep the flap attached to its subcutaneous tissues, because that's where it would get its blood supply. Once the incisions are completed, the flap can be slided based on the subcutaneous tissue into uh, the defect to meet up with the other flap in the middle of it. The V-shaped defect at the edges where the flaps were would be closed by a V to Y type of plastic. The double Limburg rhomboid flaps are examples of multiple transposition flaps used to uh, close up an elongated uh, defect, which have uh, a length much more wider than its breadth. So it cannot be closed up with the classic rhomboid design. Here you would design a parallelogram around the defect, and this parallelogram would be divided into two rhomboids and then rhomboid flaps will be uh, drawn on the two sides of these uh, two rhomboids and then can uh, meet up eventually in the middle of the defect. So that's the elongated uh, defect. And you would draw a parallelogram rather than a rhomboid around the lesion. And if the length is about double the breadth, you can divide it in the middle into two rhomboids. And then along the shorter diagonal of one rhomboid, you can extend the rhomboid, uh, classic Lim uh, Limburg rhomboid flap as an extension of the short diagonal of this rhomboid as well. And now you have two rhomboid flaps on the two sides of the uh, defect. Once the defect is excised, these two uh, rhomboid flaps can be transposed to meet up in the defect and be sutured uh, in there.
and if the uh, defect is too large to be closed up with a double Limburg rhomboid flap, one can consider using a triple Limburg rhomboid flap in this situation, rather than drawing a big rhomboid around the circular defect, one can try and draw three smaller rhomboids within the defect, so that would save some tissues. And around these three small uh, rhomboids, you can extend the diagonal, the short diagonal of each uh, to start designing a three smaller Limburg flaps around the flap, around the defect. The flaps are then uh, incised and raised and can be transposed to um, meet up in the middle of the defect with the final scar uh, which resembles a sign of a Mercedes Benz. So you draw three intersecting diameters of the defect, intersecting at 60 degrees each, and based on these you can extend the short diagonal of each of the three rhomboids to the outside, equal length to the short uh, diagonal here. So you now have drawn up the three Limburg flaps going into one direction. These are the three smaller rhomboids and within the circular defect. Now the lesion can be uh, removed and the flaps can be incised and elevated. So that is the lesion now removed. And the flaps elevated one by another and so long as they are going into the same direction they can be transposed easier to meet up in the middle of the defect and finally a square peg into a round hole type of a flap can be doubled to fill up a larger defect and the usual form of a circular defect you extend the diameter two thirds of the way, two thirds of the length of the diameter of the outside, and then have an equal length arm here, 50 or 60 degrees away from the initial arm. You have now a rhomboid or a parallelogram type of a flap that can be transposed to fill up this flap. Uh, this can be doubled if you can have uh, another cut on the other side of the extended diameter. Now you have two rhomboid flaps. Uh, and they can uh, be transposed to meet up in the middle of the elongated or the large defect. By this we come to the end of this presentation on the use of multiple flaps to fill up a large surgical defect. Assalamu alaikum.